Welcome to Martin Survival. So today my buddy Kiowa and I are just out in the field scouting around. We found some excellent agave stalks for quivers, gathered some sage as you can see, and then we also came across some pitch we're gathering to ultimately make some pitch sticks. Uh, but one of the plants we found out here was something called desert hyacinth, which is in fact edible. Uh, so we want to discuss the plant further with you guys and show you how to get to the natural food property. Stick around, we got a great show coming up. Alright folks, so I want to welcome you back and as you can see here, we have our desert hyacinth. Now I want to go over a few characteristics to help you identify this plant, but before I start, it is extremely important to do your own homework, your own research, and also take a few classes from a reputable instructor that can show you the different properties in person. You got to look at it, you got to feel it, you got to touch it, and you got to smell it in order to recognize, quite honestly, any plant. Uh, so getting into a classroom is extremely important in my opinion. Uh, but some of the first things that I look for is this purple flower top. You can see that we have a beautiful color to each one of these flowers. And then if we trace the flower top down, you can see that it has kind of an onion look, like a green onion look that we would plant in a garden or a wild onion, as a matter of fact. The one thing you do not want to mix up desert hyacinth for is death camus. So the first thing that I look for is the flower when identifying desert hyacinth. If I do not see this purple flower, I don't touch it. If it has a cream color on it, I definitely don't want to touch it because that is death camus. And death camus is very toxic and it can kill you. So at this point, uh, Kiowa and I are going to take our digging stick and start working at uprooting it to get down to that bulb. The one thing you want to do when harvesting your desert hyacinth is you can see he's taking his time. He's not cutting through the soil at a rapid at a rapid pace. Yeah, this the stem of the desert hyacinth or blue dick, as commonly known as, it's very very delicate. So you want to be careful as you're digging through that you don't detach the stem from the bulb because then your your food source is ruined at that point. Or you have to dig through it and right. start searching for it. It's a pain. So, so again, be methodical with what you do, and this applies to kind of everything. This in particular, be methodical, take your time, and you'll get a good result. Yeah. So he's just kind of digging around the plant again, and, uh, and he's just slowly removing some of the dirt to get to that bottom bulb. But you know, desert hyacinth, it's, it's a starchy food. Um, so it's going to give you the energy boost you need in the wild when traveling or living long term i always say in order to make a good diet off of plants alone you would need nuts seeds fruits and roots and these bulbs this time of year they're they're very readily harvested our corm or tuber is starting to show itself and at this point you want to be very careful just dig around it you know again try not to damage it and then once you find a point where you can actually get underneath it you want to jam your digging stick in and then uproot it just like that now at this point we have one harvested again we're going to gather a few more and uh, we'll show you how to prepare them All right, so Kiowa and I have all of our hyacinth gathered, and at this point, what I wanna do is I wanna prepare each one of these bulbs. So if you notice, each bulb has kind of a husky material over it. All I do is I just peel that off, and if there's any mud or dirt, any silt on the bulb, you can wash that off with water, of course, clean water. This riparian zone that we're sitting in we would definitely want to disinfect this water. 
out in Arizona, there's a lot of mining activity that goes on. So, and not only that, uh, the animals, wherever there's water, you'll find a lot of uh, animal activity and they tend to use the restroom very close to it. So this bulb is now prepared. It's, it's bright white, just like an onion is. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I can consume my food. Very starchy, very good, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It kind of has like a, like a pasty taste to it. Mm -hmm. In fact, some of the indigenous peoples in Africa would actually chew up bulbs mm. and they would spit them under their arrow shafts as a type of adhesive glue to then fletch their arrows. So I've never actually experimented with it, but perhaps you could do the same thing with these types of bulbs. Excellent. Yeah, these are great. Mm. So we'll just consume the rest and man, I'm thinking on the way out, we'll gather more. Mm-hmm. feast, man. Full of starch. Okay, down right there. One has a little bit of mud on it. Wash that off. Mm, man, that is good. Man, I sure was hungry. <laughs> that was a good snack. Yeah, a little wild snack. Another thing you can do uh, to keep in consideration when harvesting this stuff and bringing it back to a designated area, whether it's a campsite or a shelter you built out in the field, is roasting them. Um, I've heard of, uh, of cases where folks will gather two, 300 of these things and they'll roast them in a pit. Yeah. And um, I'm sure that's a great way of preparing them. I've never done it. I've always mm -hmm. got them and, and ate them. them. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've actually just roasted these straight on the fire. I think they that taste, be bad. they give them a nice pretty, a nice pretty flavor and uh, it's a pretty easy way of doing it. Excellent. But it has been done, you know, traditionally where they've wrapped them in leaves and they pit baked them for a while and these mm -hmm. things break down almost to like a soft onion. Yeah, absolutely. And they're, and they're very sweet and it brings out the sugars. Yeah, and out here we have a lot of watercress so mm -hmm. we can gather some of the watercress, wrap that up and... Mm -hmm. mm, Especially with excellent. the, also with the grape leaves around here too. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of food out in the desert, folks. A lot of food, a lot of medicine. You just gotta know where to look and Absolutely. You, you have to know the plants you're looking at. It is a very rich environment. Don't let anyone tell you that it's just a barren yeah. landscape because it's certainly not. As you can see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, so that is just about gonna wrap things up for me today. I do appreciate you joining me for this video. I also want to encourage you to check out some of my other videos regarding primitive skills, bushcraft, and survival skills alike. Off to my right here, I do have a couple different videos. The first one, we teach you step-by-step step in how to make a traditional hunting arrow with a removable foreshaft. Right below that, we show you how to make a traditional Southern California style arrow quiver. I do think you'll enjoy those series as well as I enjoyed making them. Furthermore, I want to invite you over to my website. That's martinsurvival.com. We have specialty gear giveaways. We have blogs and articles, a great discussion board. We also have specialty classes where you'll find us teaching primitive fire, bow making, arrow making, tracking and trapping, uh, atlatl and dart making, primitive pottery, basketry, and so much more. Just a plethora of different skills. Everything is presented in a hands-on experience as well as a historical context. So again, that's martinsurvival.com. I thank you for your support and we'll see you in the next video.